Hello guys, welcome back to another Neo video. Now if you're new here, typically our builds revolve around weapon play and builds that, while strong, still require you to actively use your skill as a player to get the most out of them. Um, this isn't that build. Uh, as promised, after my last build, I said I was going to make something that was a little bit cheesy and easy to play before getting back to our regular content, and this is that video. So I present the Cat God build. God, this build is so stupid, but okay, so the concept is we have near infinite anima generation to mindlessly spam yokai abilities. Our weapon attacks can be used from range, we can easily stack confusion in seconds, so all of that makes fighting yokai a breeze, but then on top of that you can absolutely meme on human enemies with the scambuses themselves, as showcased in the video. The first item we'll want, though it is actually optional, is the scampers hat. This hat, along with all of the other armor pieces, come with untouched clay bed of reckoning. Now you can only summon three scampuses at a time, but the chance to not spend them is useful in longer mission runs. A thing to take note of is you can't summon scampuses if you're a visitor in someone else's mission, so if I were to continue to use this build I'd mostly use it for solo farming and expeditions. If you're just fighting in single boss rooms you won't need untouched clay bed of reckoning. Nevertheless if you want to run the build like I do you can obtain this hat by completing all of the missions in the game including Way of the Demon, however I don't think this includes online missions or the DLC missions. I'm pretty sure this unlocked for me simply after beating all of the base game missions in Way of the demon including the submissions. So we want five pieces of Genryu's armor, the Udato sword to complete the full set of the crown of patricide for the six piece set bonus of animal bonus on Amrita absorption. You of course need a Yasakani Magatama for that to work. We then want both of our weapons and ranged weapons to have Hotei's grace which is going to increase both our key recovery and our melee damage when at full HP which is very easy to manage due to using a ranged playstyle. Speaking of which our main weapon is the hatchets and we're using the Zenki and Gogi because it comes with purity. For the ranged weapons themselves, take anything you like as long as they roll with Hotei's Grace. For your accessory, take any that you like, but I'm running Tokichiro's God simply because I got untouched clay bell to roll on it. And we will go over our scroll after we take a look at the stats. So on my hatchets, I have all ablaze duration increase, attack bonus courage, an inheritable of break, and a gold inheritable of melee key damage. For the sword, it's just the stat sticks, don't worry about that. And the match lock here is the only ranged weapon I have optimized for this build, but you'll want damage bonus agility on both your ranged weapons. My personal choice for rolls on ranged weapons will always include weapon speed up and movement speed whilst using that weapon. On our scamper set, I have an optional roll of luck. On your magic power, key bonus based on Amrita gauge, inherited advancing storm damage, and gold inherited attack increase. Keep in mind, I have advancing storm rolled onto all of my gear, but you don't need this. You can simply roll active skill damage onto all of your gear nature. I only took advancing storm damage because it was easy for me to transfer over from my old sets of gear from base game. So onto the chest, again I have untouched clay bell rolled onto all of my gear via star rolls. If you want this just keep forging until it shows up. Omyo magic power, untouched omyo magic, you don't actually need this because we're not really using offensive omyo, I'll explain why we are stacking magic power shortly. Life recovery on Amrita absorption, definitely take this, it's essential. Damage taken at critical, probably the second best chest roll you can get after life recovery. And then in Inherited Advancing Storm Damage. On the gloves, Inherited Advancing Storm Damage, a star roll of Untouched Clay Bell of Reckoning, Omyo Magic Power, Attack Increase, and Gold Inherited Running Speed and Untouched Omyo Magic. For the Waste, Key Recovery Bonus and Ritter Gauge, Star Rolled Untouched Clay Bell, Omyo Magic, Running Speed, Inherited Advancing Storm Damage, and Gold Inherited Attack Increase. For the Boots, Running Speed, Star Rolled Untouched Clay Bell, Omyo Magic, Faster Winded Recovery, Inherited Advancing Storm Damage, and Gold Inherited Attack Increase. On my first accessory, Defense Bonus Courage, Omyo Magic Power, most importantly Anima Increase, you definitely want that, and a lucky roll of Untouched Clay Bell. For the Yasakani, most importantly Life Recovery on Amrita Absorption, then an optional roll of Untouched Omyo Magic, Omyo Magic Bonus Amrita Gauge, and Defense Bonus Magic. Now the reason we are stacking Omyo Magic Power even though we're not using many offensive spells is for this. Our scroll has damage bonus based on magic power for a C plus rating, so a C plus rating isn't a significant damage increase, but considering we already have our damage modifiers in place before this, this works out to be an extra bit of damage rather than replacing anything else that would be of more value. So moving on to the Guardian Spirit, we are using Kurama Tengu, Anima Charge Bonus, Cumulative Damage, Active Skill Key Consumption, very helpful with ranged hatchet spam, Yokai Ability Damage to Purified Enemies, this is why we are running Purified Hatchets, Two Throws, and they are purified provided you're using a Purification Talisman, followed by Yokai Ability Spam, taking 20% extra damage, not including all of the other Yokai Ability Damage Increase modifiers that we have stacked onto our cores, and then we have Dodge Key Consumption, not bad, but key recovery at full HP, as mentioned earlier, is very useful to this playstyle. 
For our cores then, I'd say Scampus and Otakumaru are the most useful for this build specifically. Scampus will increase our anima charge when enhanced, as well as increase the duration of our cats by 20%. I also have great secondary roles of Yokai ability damage 10%. And then on Otakumaru, along with being one of the strongest abilities to spam even post nerf, it easily applies confusion, as well as coming with native anima increase and anima bonus to confused enemies. And my secondary roles were perfect with Yokai ability damage and life drain. So with these secondary roles in mind, I chose Kasha as my other core. Kasha does great damage on her own, instantly procs burning, has life drain on yokai ability, increases our movement speed when absorbing Amrita, which is perfect for the range hatchets, and I have the absolute perfect roles of anima increase, anima bonus to confused enemies, and attunement cost reduction, which is essential to fit this into the setup. Our second guardian spirit is completely optional, I'm just using Inner Saseo for the 7.5% damage reduction if I get hit while spamming attacks. For our jutsu, we want purification talisman to allow our hatchets to proc purity in two throws, extract Action Talisman is the source of all of our healing as well as our set bonus anima generation which we'll get from Amrita Absorption, Arc Yokai Talisman to massively increase our anima generation further, optionally you can take Weakness Talisman and I also have 10 points in decks to fit in 3 quick change scrolls. So looking at the stats, first take everything required by your gear, your Sakani and your Spirit Guardian and you then want 99 points in Courage and Magic. You're then going to want to dual scale your hatchets for both Courage and Magic via the remodeling in the Blacksmith. 35 points in stamina gives us our B agility rating, 99 points in skill which is the final damage scaling stat for hatchets although this is optional, 10 points in dex for 3 quick change scrolls is also optional. Now you have a choice here between heart or constitution as your final dump stat, obviously constitution is going to give you a lot more HP so I would recommend this however I put points into heart just because of my specific playstyle in case I ever want to switch to the sword to mix things up. For the trees themselves the only thing you really need to worry about is in the shifling tree so take everything that relates in any way to anima generation and then I don't have it myself because I'm not respecting these stats just for this meme of a build but you can also take feline friend that will increase your scampus duration for your clans again I'm still in Honda because I'm not changing clans just for this build but if you wanted to main a build like this there are a couple of clans that are great for anima generation such as house date for efficient yokai abilities and anima charge melee attack as well as house kuki if you were going to run a water build which would increase your yokai ability damage and provide an anima bonus on water attack and that's pretty much the build guys I promise for our next build we'll be getting back to our regular format of actually using our weapons in a way that actually takes some skill until then if you want to join our discord for trading for grouping up or just asking general questions about the game the links will be provided in the description and in the pinned comment if you like this video please hit the thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed consider doing so for more neo 2 content coming soon okay guys until next time stay safe and take care